Hello, crises in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias St. Georgian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, September 26, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. John's First Universal Letter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his own spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we know and believe the love of God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. In this is love perfected with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and he who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 through 27, and chapter 21, verses 24 and 25. At that time, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did, and were every one of them to be written. I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today, we come to the end of the readings of Tito Colliender's book, The Way of the Ascetics, the concluding chapter 26. And the title of this chapter is On the Pearl of Great Price. Stripped of all knowledge, lacking in every good thought or deed, without memory from the past or wish for the future, as useless as a worn-out rag, unfeeling as a stone in the path, corroded as a warm-eaten mushroom in the woods, mortal as a fish on the shore, and grieved to tears over this wretched plight of yours, thus you will stand in prayer before the Almighty, your judge and your creator and father, your savior and master, the spirit of truth, the giver of life. And like the prodigal son, you will stammer out of the depths of your impotency. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. That's Luke 15, chapter chapter 15, verse 21. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You know your impotence, and you let yourself lie like a grain of dust before the Almighty. And out of your wretchedness grows love for your fellow man as the created by the Lord and aglow with him. He in his unfathomable being takes notice of them. It is enough for you to offer everything for them. The strange thing has now come to pass, and the deeper you pressed into your own heart, the further and higher you climbed out of yourself. The outward conditions of your life are the same. You wash dishes and care for children. You go to work, you draw your salary, and you pay your taxes. You do everything pertaining to your external life as a person in a society, since there is no chance of leaving it. But you have resigned yourself. You have given away one thing in order to receive another. And if I have not thee, God, what more do I ask on earth? Nothing, answers John Climacus, but ceaselessly praying, silently cling to thee. Some are enslaved by riches, other by honor, still others by acquiring possessions. My only desire is to cling to God. Prayer, with all that it contains for self-renunciation, has become your real life, which you keep up as though only for the sake of prayer. Walking with God, see Genesis 6, 9, is from now on the only thing that has real value for you And it includes all heavenly and earthly events. For him who bears Christ within himself, there is neither death nor illness nor any earthly clamor. He has already stepped into eternal life, and that embraces everything. 
Night and day, the heavenly seed sprouts in your heart and grows, and you know not how. The earth produces of itself your heart's soil, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. See Mark 4, 27 and 28. The saints speak of something they call the inextinguishable light. It is a light not of the eye, but of the heart that never ceases to walk in purity and cleanness, clearness. It swiftly leaves the darkness behind and constantly strives towards the day's height. Its constant quality is to be continually purified. This is the light of eternity that can never go out, but that shines through the veil of time and matter. But the saints never say that this light is given to them, but that it is given only to those who have purified their hearts in love for the Lord and the narrow way which they have freely chosen. The narrow way has no end. Its quality is eternity. There every moment is a moment of beginning. The present includes the future, the day of judgment. The present includes the past, creation. For Christ is timelessly present everywhere, both in hell and in heaven. With the coming, the coming of the one, plurality disappears, even in time and space. Everything happens simultaneously, now and here and everywhere, in the depths of your heart. There you meet what you sought, the depth and the height and the breadth of the cross, the Savior and salvation. Therefore, if you wish to save your soul and win eternal life, arise moment by moment from your dullness, bless yourself with the sign of the cross and say, Let me, Lord, make a good beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And may God bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I pray that you have a great day. God bless you. And, have, and God willing, we will see you tomorrow.